I am Angela Reginaldo of Laguna State Polytechnic University. And with me in the platform is my research partner, Dr. Ruby Brion. So I am here to ta to task to, the to present to you our research entitled Institutionalization of Gender and Development in Extension and Training Services Programs of Laguna State Polytechnic University System. So pursuant to its mandates as one of the agencies responsible in implementing the Magna Carta of Women, the Commission on Higher Education issued Chad Memorandum Order Number no. 1, Series of 2015, which directs the institutionalization of the required policies, standards, and guidelines to build internal capacities in mainstreaming gender and development. This is within CHED and the various functions of higher education in accordance with the function of the state to exercise responsible supervision and regulation of all educational institutions. So the guidelines seek to introduce and institutionalize gender equality and gender responsiveness and sensitivity in the various aspects of the Philippine higher education and also to establish the God Focal Point System, or FPS, and mainstream gender in the trilogical functions of higher education, which includes curriculum development, gender-responsive research programs, and gender-responsive extension programs. So the Laguna State Polytechnic University is a strong advocate of gender equality, visioning to be one of the leading HEIs, or higher educational institution, in steering development efforts towards women's empowerment and gender equality. So it has a mission to design and implement policies and programs which are geared towards promoting gender equality and equity. It also aims to protect the rights of children, and enhance the quality of life of women and men equally participating in the development, management, and operation of globally competitive outputs, thus uplifting their overall development and promoting welfare. So the framework is from the model of the Institutionalization of Quality Assurance of Franco and Associates in 2002. And it also made use of Zucker stages of institutionalization, which are habitualization, objectific objectification, and sedimentation. So the objectives of the study are, so this study aimed to analyze the institutionalization of gender and development in the extension and training services of Laguna State Polytechnic University. Specifically, it aimed to analyze the institutionalization of gender and development in conducting policy, programs, and structure evaluation in its four campuses. Also, it aims to determine the level and stage of GAD or gender and development institutionalization using the phenomenological approach and GMEF. And finally, to determine the good practices and challenges in gender and development institutionalization and identify the factors that have led to these practices and challenges. So the methodologies that we have used here are as follows. For our research design, what we used is the phenomenological design. So this is the design which is aimed to explain a particular phenomenon through how they are perceived by the actors of the situation. And the research locale of our study is definitely the Laguna State Polytechnic University with all its four campuses and its four satellite campuses. So the respondents of our study are all the members of the God Focal Point System, our four campus directors, the budget officers of the respective campuses, the gender and development and the extension and training services directors, the gender and development and extension and training services chairpersons, the unit heads, and the partner agencies and the communities. 
So the tools that we have used here are the GMEF and the HGDG, which are tools that are provided by the Philippine Commission on Women. So these are some of the evaluations or the methodology that we have used to evaluate the GAD policy. So for the criteria existence and content of the GAD manual, so we posted the questions, when was the manual created? And what are its essential elements? So the method that we have used are document review and interview. And the sources of information are the GAD manual and our key informants. Now, for the criteria GAD as viewed and practiced by the university officials and the GAD focal persons, our question posted was how is GAD promoted in the university? So again, we made use of interview and our sources of information are the campus directors, the GAD director, the extension and training services director, the chairpersons, and again, the unit heads. For the criteria participation of women and men in the identification of the development of the problem, so the questions posted are, what are the considerations in institutionalizing GAD? Are the participants involved in the identification of gender issues? And do the participants have the opportunity to express their ideas about gender issues? And the method that we used here is the focus group discussion. And our sources are definitely the participants, which includes also the members of the community that we have served. Now for the collection and use of sex disaggregated data in the analysis of the development problem. So the questions posted were, were are the data stating the crucial gender issues in the community? And what do the data say about the condition of the women? So again, we had interviews, and these are our sources of information. Okay. And finally, on the conduct of gender analysis to identify the gender issues that the proposed project must address. So we had the questions, how do the data help in addressing the gender issues? Does the gender office make use of the sex disaggregated data? And what are the considerations in planning and designing the gender programs? So we conducted interviews and we also had the document interview. And we had a sources, the GAD director, the chairpersons, and the unit heads, and even the annual GAD plans and budgets. So we have included also our budget officers. So these are some of the GAD plan and budget for our activities. So for the GAD issue, gender mainstreaming as a strategy for implementing the MCW. So these are the corresponding budgets and the percentage from the total GAD budget because as we all know, our gender and development has a 5% budget from our university budget. So the right to live to livelihood, credit, capital, and technology, we have this amount, women's right to health, redefinition of economic and gender roles for left behind parents and or their children, disaster risk reduction management among community, income opportunities of stakeholders, the women's role in nation building, involvement of men and women in PPAs. PPAs here stands for programs, projects, and activities. Policies addressing gender needs and gender mainstreaming in research and development and extension. So we have a total GAD budget of 13,200,000, which is 46.154% of the total GAD budget. Okay, so these are some of the issues, uh, the same issues in the previous table with the GAD objective and the activities that we have conducted for so for gender mainstreaming as a strategy for implementing the MCW, so the objective is to mainstream activities or the PPAs of partner agencies to God. So we were able to conduct seminars on God and the norms of conduct of public officials and employees under RA 6713, Section 4A. We also had a seminar workshop on gender mainstreaming and analysis, deepening session on gender and development analysis and tools in GAD, and GAD planning and budgeting. For the right to livelihood, we have financial literacy. So we have that title, No Family Left Behind Among Non-Teaching Personnel and Community. So women's right to health, we have conducted seminars on breastfeeding for young mothers-to-be. 
for the redefinition of economic and gender roles for left behind parents and children, we have seminars on, on research and ge on gender and migration. So for disaster risk reduction management among community, so we conducted quarterly nationwide simultaneous earthquake and fire drills. For income opportunities of our stakeholders, we conducted God-related extension activities that involves women, and we even have environmental projects and income generation seminars. For women's role in nation building, we conducted the National Women's Month Forum, film showings, and we even co-hosted the Regional God Convention for Region 4A. For the involvement of men and women in PPAs, the programs, projects, and activities, we conducted 46 gender sensitivity trainings in all for the whole of Laguna and neighboring uh, municipalities and even towns. So for the policies addressing gender needs, so we conducted seminars on gender analysis and gender tools. And for mainstreaming our research and development and extension, so there are seminars on HDG, HGDG, the Hagadaga, and the GMEF for researchers and extensionists of the whole university. So for the results and discussion, so the accomplishments revealed that the university is organization focused. So they are centered on consciousness raising and sensitization among the stakeholders and providing gender friendly environment through gender responsive policies, programs and projects. Next, we have God-related extension programs of LSPU system are well implemented. So this means that the support of the administration to the program was evident and which is very significant to bring about the changes in the economic community, making it gender responsive extension projects. And in compliance to international and national laws, institutional mechanism was established and focal persons have been designated as well as the God director, chairpersons, and unit heads. So the God focal persons have been able to initiate the excellent conduct of varied activities. Capability building activities have been done also in the effort for the community to become aware of the existence of the programs through the extension and training services. Next, the overall ratings obtained from the tools indicates that the gender mainstreaming effort of Laguna State Polytechnic University's gender and development in the extension and training services programs, projects, and activities shows significant improvement following the government agency's mandate to establish mechanisms and adopt necessary measures to eliminate gender inequalities. Also, based on the result of the GMF tools, LSPU is already in the third stage as evidenced by the establishment of the focal system planners and implementers, the translation and incorporation of gender and development into actual programs and projects. Next, we also have the conduct of policy programs and structure evaluation of gender and development revealed that the existence of the GAD manual guarantees that ideal gender and development related extension and training services programs were delivered to the people. And the university uses the HGDG and the GMEF evaluation tools, and they have a God desk and a direct coordination with the Philippine Commission on Women. And comparison of the campuses regarding the institutionalization revealed that the institutionalized programs are close to the ideal God. So for our conclusions, so the study showed the importance of raising gender issues in the various ideas of the gender and development unit. And it is important to raise gender issues during the early stages of God plan preparation and in the right shop on extension project proposals so that we would really be able to 
uh, focus and solve, or if not really solve, but rather uh, raise awareness on those gender issues. And finally, the LSPU system through efficiently practicing gender mainstreaming in its gender and development related extension programs, projects and activities still has to proactively harmonize development planning with development partners to maximize exchanges of learning and knowledge. And these are the references that we have used in our study. So thank you so much for listening and a pleasant day, everyone. Thank you.